Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Joel Wanger, the political director for Democratic Majority for Israel. On behalf of our entire staff, our president, Mark Melman, and board and board co-chairs, Ann Lewis and Todd Richmond, whom I believe are joining us today, welcome. We hope that you and your loved ones are well and are staying healthy. Before I turn it over to our board co-chair, Todd Richmond, to introduce our distinguished guest, I'm going to go over a few items. If you like what you're hearing today, please check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can sign up for our news and updates on our website, dmfi.org. We'll take questions during the event. And if you wanna ask a question, submit it through the Q&A feature on your Zoom interface. If you're watching on Facebook Live and wanna ask a question, you can type it into the comments box. Following our conversation with the Congresswoman, we have a video to share on Jewish American Heritage Month, so we highly encourage you to stick around. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to DMFI co-chair, Todd Richmond, to introduce our distinguished guest today. Great, thank you, Joel. Can you hear me? We got you, John. Fantastic. Well, I'm gonna be quick since we're running uh, slightly a bit behind schedule. On behalf of uh, myself, my co-chair, Ann Lewis, and our CEO, uh, President Mark Melman, and our board, we just wanna welcome everybody that is on our Zoom today, and we appreciate all of your support. Uh, it is my distinct honor to introduce someone who I consider a, a, a good friend, um, not just of myself, but of the US-Israel relationship and just a great American. Uh, Congresswoman Grace Meng is in her fifth term uh, representing the sixth district in Queens. She's the first Asian American to represent uh, Congress in New York. She serves on the important appropriations committee as well as the vice chair of the subcommittee on state and foreign operations. She also serves on the important House Ethics Committee and plays a role in the uh, Democratic Party, the Democratic leadership on the, the DNC. Uh, Grace has, as I said before, been a, a huge proponent of the U.S.-Israel relationship, uh, supporting foreign aid, Iron Dome, and so many other things that are crucial to ensuring Israel's safety. We've also been concerned as a community on the rise in hate crimes against the AAPI community. And... Um, Congresswoman, we want you to know that we are with you, standing shoulder by shoulder. Um, the love that we have for your community as an incredible community, as great Americans, and we are, we are with you, as I said before. So without further ado, let me send it back to Joel and to the great Congresswoman from the state of New York, next door to my congressional district, Congresswoman Grace Meng. Thank you so much, uh, Todd, for that kind introduction. And thank you for your friendship and for you reaching out on behalf of both yourself and DMFI, uh, the family, um, during this tough time for the Asian American community. Uh, thank you to our CEO, Mark Melman, uh, to your co-chair, Anne, and the entire board, and really everyone who made today's events happen. And, all the work that you during do during the, the year. Um, I want to add a special, um, you know, acknowledgement. Uh, our hearts and thoughts and prayers are going out to the people of Israel uh, during this um, tough time from what happened in M Mount Marin um, to events in recent days and just the, the unrest that we are watching from uh, across the globe. Um, our prayers are with uh, all of you and your loved ones. Um, I, you know, really am honored to be here with all of you. I apologize for being late and for being in the car, but you are uh, all getting a free tour of my congressional district here in Queens, and you are all welcome here anytime. Um, but really just wanted to say thank you to the DMFI family and also to so many leaders in the Asian, in the uh, Jewish community for being such um, uh, early uh, allies with the Asian American community during this tough time. You know, for over a year, uh, over a year now, the Asian American community has been uh, dealing with sort of, you know, two different viruses, that of the COVID pandemic, but also this virus of bigotry and discrimination. And I will say that as an Asian American, um, I have never felt such a widespread showing of support and encouragement and love from so many from way beyond the Asian American community. And I will say from the very beginning, when many people in our mainstream society 
were not really paying attention and weren't even really acknowledging some of what was going on, um, many in the Jewish community reached out, um, not just to show support in words, but in actions, you know, groups like DMFI to AJC to ADL to so many reached out, um, sort of taking the Asian American community under your wings. And I just really want to say on behalf of the community, how appreciative of how appreciative we are. You know, the Asian American community really has for most of our lives felt like we were sort of seen either as invisible and silent or as constant, you know, perpetual foreigners and outsiders. Our, our muscles of advocacy are relatively new and young. Um, and this is one of those moments where I believe we will come out of this stronger. I am so hopeful because I believe that during this tough time, many coalitions are being built and being expanded. Um, it was Jewish community leaders who came to us early on and shared the sentiment that, of course, words matter and words left unchecked can lead to unrest and violent acts. And Jewish leaders have taken the Asian American community under their wings and whether it's helping us collect data to helping us tell our stories to talking about uh, bonds that we share in our history and present day as well. So I'm incredibly grateful. We are working on legislation that uh, Senator Hirono and I are sponsoring. And I have to give a quick shout out uh, to not just our New York Senator, but Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. And Todd will make sure that Senator Schumer knows I said something nice about him. Um, he helped shepherd that bill through the Senate. It got a vote of 94 to one. This is legislation that will not just help only the Asian American community, but any community who is a victim of discrimination and, and hate attacks. Um, it really just, uh, it would provide more funding to local community groups. It would establish dedicated personnel and resources at the Department of Justice. Right now, most hate incidents uh, happening across the country to any community are not even reported to the hey, federal Jerry. government. Hi, we don't have a full accounting of the types of data on the types of incidents that have been happening across the country. And so we know that without adequate data and statistics for any problem, any issue, we can't fully solve the problem. This bill would also give guidance to local law entities to help them more effectively investigate these types of cases. Some law entities don't necessarily know what type of language and actions are indeed discriminatory. And so hopefully it would make it easier for people to both report these cases and to have these cases investigated. Um, I'm really excited um, that the bill will hopefully be passed in the House uh, over the next few weeks and we'll continue to work together. But really, I just wanted to be here primarily to say thank you to so many of you who have been our friends from the very beginning of this uh, tough time. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Congresswoman. I wanted to share uh, with you a message from one of our folks who's on, Rabbi Pupko, who says, my family is from Shanghai and I lived there for two generations, saved from the Holocaust by Asian hospitality. I just wanted to tell the Congresswoman Meng, we all stand with the API community and we love them. That's from Rabbi Pupko, I wanted to share that with you. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yes, uh, so, you know, you spoke a, a lot about kind of the, the bill, the HR 1843, and then the Senate companion bill introduced by Senator Hirono. Um, but can you also speak some about uh, House Resolution 151 uh, that you helped to, to sponsor, you know, and, and kind of what you hope uh, that, what, how you hope this resolution will help to change behaviors and actually help to make a brighter future for the API community? Sure. Early last year, when we were beginning to see an increase in these types of incidents, we proposed legislation that basically said that Congress stands united across party lines, um, across different backgrounds to come together and condemn bigotry towards Asian Americans. 
Um, we were proud that the resolution passed the House, but even though it was just a symbolic resolution that cost no money, uh, we were disappointed that many Congress members actually voted against the legislation. Um, and that was something that we really thought was important to show that Congress was taking a united stand. Um, and then this year, you know, we felt that it was important not just to propose a symbolic resolution, mm -hmm. but to also propose and to get past that hate crimes legislation um, that I talked about. Awesome. That, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, uh, as the first and only Asian American elected uh, to Congress from New York, how have you seen Congress evolve since you were first elected in 2012? And how has the Congressional Asian uh, Pacific American Caucus changed in that time as well? So our Congressional Asian Caucus is called KPAC and the numbers have grown. Um, we lost a member in Kamala Harris, but that's okay because she got promoted to be our vice president. Um, but we are at, I believe it's 21 strong. Um, so it's been really exciting to watch our numbers grow. These are members who are not just from the typical, you know, East Coast, West Coast urban areas with significant Asian populations, but also members who don't represent large Asian populations necessarily, like an Andy Kim from New Jersey. Um, and we were also really excited during the last uh, cycle to help engage with various Asian communities around the country from Nevada to Georgia to Virginia. And what I love about, you know, I did some work um, for the last four years, I was one of the officers at the DNC. And what I loved about my work there was that not only did I get to travel to 20 some states and meet with Asian American communities in places like Kansas and Arizona and Montana, but to watch how watch and learn how they engage with other communities, Jewish, Black, Latino, et cetera, and really helped make a difference by working together. And sometimes I think, you know, in New York, because we're so diverse and diverse communities are so large that we might even take each other for granted sometimes. And so I'm always looking for more opportunities where we can sort of find these uh, alliances and, and work more effectively together. Awesome. So in New York City, hate crimes against Jewish and, and Asian people constituted almost 75% of all the hate crimes reported in the city in 2021 so far. And the numbers are continuing to rise. Now, why do you believe there has been such a sharp increase in these violent attacks? And what can we do to combat hate within our communities, both the Jewish community and the Asian community? As a Democrat who worked really hard to get Joe Biden elected, I can be political and blame one person um, on the increased attacks against Asian Americans um, in our former president who used incendiary language like Chinese virus and Kung flu, language that his own health secretary and WHO uh, director even suggested that he not use. Um, you know, that that language really sparked this increase. But let's also be honest with ourselves in that fearful scapegoating of Asian Americans and other communities didn't just happen and start in the last few years. This is something that's gone on in our country and our world's history throughout time. So I still believe that, of course, we have to address these incidents as they're happening and um, work to make sure that we have of more effective tools from a law enforcement perspective, but we also have to do a lot more in promoting diverse and inclusive curriculum and education. I was mm -hmm. proud that last year, Cong or last year or two, Congress passed legislation to include the teaching of ho the Holocaust in our curriculum across um, America. And that's something that we should talk about as well as, you know, talking more about the history of different communities, like what Asian Americans have contributed to this country. There's a lot that we don't learn about as kids in America going to school here, whether it's the Chinese Exclusion Act uh, to the Japanese incarceration camps. And so I think there's a lot more room 
uh, on that end, as we try to break down some of these walls of biases and stereotypes that we just have to have a more inclusive um, education. Um, and, you know, we can talk about media portrayal of different mm -hmm. communities, whether it's someone in a, wearing a yarmulke, whether it's someone uh, who is Asian American, we need more diverse portrayals of various communities uh, in the TV and the movies that we watch too. Definitely. So you mentioned kind of the role that former President Trump's rhetoric played in the inflaming of tensions. Uh, kind of on the other end, how do you think the current administration has performed in supporting the API community uh, with the growing rate of anti-Asian sentiment? Well, I have felt a lot better since President Biden came on board, you know, for the past year, I and so many in the community really felt like we've been screaming into a black hole, you know, begging the former administration to please stop using these words. Even when I wrote my resolution, I didn't even put his name in it, even though I really wanted to. I was trying to make it as, you know, nonpartisan as possible, just like, please stop using that language. Um, you know, it doesn't help any community to be, to be scapegoated like that. Um, and so, you know, I was really relieved when President Biden in his first, within his first few months of office, you know, not only acknowledged the pain that the Asian community was going through, talked about it during a national address, signed an executive memo deal detailing his um, intentions to work on this issue, travel to Atlanta to meet with local leaders after the murders that happened in Atlanta, um, continues to engage with our community to make sure that we feel included and that our needs are being addressed. So I'm just incredibly thankful. Awesome. Well, I, I know you have another meeting that you're headed to in your district. Uh, so we're just going to wrap up with, with one last question, you know, which is what can folks on this call do besides encouraging their members in the House to, to sign on to and support your legislation? What else can we do uh, to help to support uh, the API community in, in this time? So it's so incredibly helpful to have support for the legislation. And oftentimes, you know, allies ask what they can do. And I will say that many of uh, the members of the community here have already done. And, you know, I just ask that that continues to include us and to see us. There are so many times, whether we're in the fields of media, uh, academia, um, uh, including politics, including our own political party, where Asian Americans are completely left out of the conversation um, and not mentioned. And so, you know, just to include us, whether we're talking about our history books, our budget books, it's just so important that we are seen as Americans. Asian Americans have really been seen as outsiders. We could be second, third generation um, Americans and people still ask, you know, where I learned to speak English. I mean, I was born and raised in Queens. I should know English, right? Or they like ask me where, uh, they asked me to go back or, you know, people making fun of our food and our facial features. And so to just include us and to see us as fellow Americans um, really means so much. Well, Congresswoman, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate you uh, fitting us into your schedule as you continue to serve your constituents in your district as you've done so well since, since you were elected. So thank you again for your time. Uh, and. You know, for those of us who, for those of us joining on the call of our supporters, we're going to do a slight pivot because May is also Jewish American Heritage Month, and we wanted to uh, share two things with you. Uh, we're, we have a brief video we're going to show you, but before that, I want to share uh, with you the words that that uh, President Biden uh, wrote in his proclamation on Jewish American Heritage Month for this year. Um, yeah, so Congressman Bang, thank you again so much for for being with us. Before we go ahead and pivot. So thank you. So as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the, the proclamation from, from President Biden. Uh, so yeah, so the Jewish American experience is a story of faith, fortitude, and progress. It is a quintessential American experience, one that is connected to key tenets of American identity, including our nation's commitment to freedom of religion and conscience. 
This month, we honor Jewish Americans, past and present, who've inextricably woven their experiences and their accomplishments into the fabric of our national identity. Generations of Jewish people have come to this nation fleeing oppression, discrimination, and persecution in search of a better life for themselves and their children. These Jewish Americans have created lives for themselves and their families and played indispensable roles in our nation's civic and community life, making invaluable contributions to our nation through their leadership and achievements. And this year, we also recognize two historic firsts. As America saw the vice president take the oath of office alongside her Jewish spouse, and a Jewish American became the first majority leader of the United States Senate and the highest ranking Jewish American elected in our nation's history. Alongside this narrative of achievement and opportunity, there is also a history, far older than the nation itself, of racism, bigotry, and other forms of injustice. This includes the scourge of anti-Semitism. In recent years, Jewish Americans have increasingly been the target of white nationalism and the anti-Semitic violence it fuels. As our nation strives to heal these wounds and overcome these challenges, let us acknowledge and celebrate the cru crucial contributions that Jewish Americans have made to our collective struggle for a more just and fair society. Leading movements for social justice, working to ensure the opportunities they have secured are extended to others, and heeding the words of the Torah, justice, justice shall you pursue. A central concept in Judaism, Lador Vador, or from generation to generation, recognizes both the continuity of the Jewish people and the intergenerational responsibility we have to heal the world for our children. During Jewish American Heritage Month, we honor Jewish Americans who inspired by Jewish values and American ideals have engaged in the ongoing work of forming a more perfect union. Now, therefore I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, to hereby proclaim May 2021 as Jewish American Heritage Month. I call upon all Americans to visit www.jewishheritagemonth.gov to learn more about the heritage and contributions of Jewish Americans and to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies. In witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 30th day of April in the year 2021 of the end of the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, Joseph R. Biden, Jr. Awesome. So as we mentioned, uh, we have put together a video clip highlighting some of the speeches that members of Congress have given over the years since uh, Jewish American Heritage Month was created in 2006. So I believe now our folks are going to go ahead and share the video. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Marcia Fudge. Please join me in commemorating Jewish American Heritage Month. I am proud to serve Ohio's largest Jewish community and recognize the many contributions of its people. I rise to celebrate the seventh annual Jewish American Heritage Month an opportunity for our nation to recognize the many contributions of Jewish Americans throughout our history. I'm so pleased to be joined by my colleagues tonight as we honor our nation's Jewish community through Jewish American Heritage Month. As the first Jewish woman to represent the state of Florida in the United States Congress, I am so proud to be a strong voice on many issues crucial to our community, from tolerance and understanding to tikkun olam. Our recent celebrations of Passover and Holocaust Remembrance Day remind us of the Jewish people's perseverance. They courageously left familiar land to enrich the American culture. Their traditions have withstood exile and persecution. Their history has inspired us to promote justice and dignity for all people. And their leadership helped bring civil rights to millions of Americans. Each year, the month of May introduces Jewish culture to the entire country in order to raise awareness and dispel harmful prejudices. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, we have seen a precipitous rise in intolerance and anti-Semitism, not just in this country, but ac across the globe. And it's my hope that by providing the framework for the discussion of Jewish culture and contributions to our nation, we'll be able to reduce the ignorance that ultimately leads to anti-Semitism. Jewish Americans have a long history of shaping our political priorities as a nation. 
I'm proud to be part of a community that has led efforts to protect the most vulnerable, to ensure fairness in our justice system, to promote economic opportunity, and to safeguard the religious freedoms and liberties of all Americans. I salute all Jewish Americans and celebrate the richness of their heritage and contributions to our society. Thank you. I'm now going to turn it over to our board co-chair, Ann Lewis, with some closing remarks. Let's see if we got this right. Is my audio on? Good. Uh, let's we got you now. You got me. Okay. Trying to read the messages here. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thanks to all of you for being on. As you heard, I'm Ann Lewis. I'm proud to be the co-chair of DMFI's Board of Directors. And I want to start by thanking all of you who've been with us today for this program. What a great way to celebrate both Jewish American Heritage Month and Asian American Pacific Month. And our thanks again to Congresswoman Grace Meng, who just does such an inspiring job for her constituents and I've got to say for the nation. Uh, we're all fortunate that she is in Congress. And thanks to all of you for taking time to be with us this afternoon. I hope we'll see you at our next program, which will be on June 2nd with the new ambassador from Israel, Gilad Erdan, who will be with us then. Here we go, June 2nd, 2 p.m. You can write it down now or put a note in your computer. As you probably know, but I'm going to talk a bit, it's worth talking about. And again, DMFI is the only organization committed to working within the Democratic Party to ensure that as Democrats, we continue our proud tradition of supporting the US-Israel relationship. We can't do it without the support and help of other people who care about these issues just as we do. So for those of you who are on this call, if you care too with us about this goal, I hope you'll join us in this work. Since you're already in front of the screen, you can go to dmfi.org to sign up. You'll get more information. You'll get invitations to other programs like the conversation with Ambassador Erdogan, and you can get to make a contribution. If you want to learn more about DMFI and how you can get involved, you can reach out to us through the website or send us a note at info at dmfi.org. That's info, I-N-F-O, at dmfi.org. Once again, thank you so much for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you again. Thanks, everybody.